Hello, welcome to a new book kiss in a new house, in a new place. I believe in this booktube world, the opposite of a book haul is a book on haul, where you talk about getting rid of books as opposed to buying them or receiving them. And that's what I have done recently, so I wanted to talk about that. First of all, let's introduce the bookcase. This is from Ikea. I can't remember the name of it, but it costs £21. It has five shelves. You're seeing the top two right now. Um, it's not quite as white as it's looking on camera. It's a little bit off-white, a vintage white, you might say. And I'm not sure how tall it is, but I'm five foot nine, and it's bigger than I am, so back into my squat position. <laughs> so if you don't already know, I moved house and moving house is an incredibly stressful thing. To add to that, I also moved from one country to another, which involved crossing a sea, which involved putting our belongings in a car, putting that car on a boat, a big boat, and driving, lots of driving. So basically we had to be very, very strict about what we chose to bring with us. In terms of getting the books that I finally chose to bring here, here we ended up um, stacking them underneath the seats in our car, so the front seat and the passenger seat, we just fit them in like a beautiful game of Tetris and that's how I made sure that they got here without getting bent or knocking into each other. So I don't know how many books that I currently own, but it is what you see. These, these two shelves, that's it. There are no other books anywhere in this house. And I also didn't count how many I got rid of. So it felt like quite a lot. I've been quite good at consistently getting rid of books at the end of each university term. I did that and I, you know, I sold my books to younger students and stuff like that. But I did own too many books. I must credit Rosianna, as I often do when I talk about things that are important or good for the old self-care. Um, I'll link a video of hers in the description because she's very good at minimalism and regularly checking in with what possessions you own and what possessions you need and your relationship to your possessions and I find it all very interesting. I will say that getting rid of my books was so much easier than I thought it would be. It really was not that difficult and books are so strange. We have this, well I have this relationship with books that I don't have with any other possession or any other hobby or any other kind of physical manifestation of a personality trait. I am a bookish person. Look at all my books. My relationship with the books I owned was definitely not just about those books and not just about me. It was about projecting an image to you. Definitely that's part of it because, you know, books are part of this channel. But also projecting an image of myself to people who would come to our house, our friends. My books previously, as they are now, were in the living room of our house, so a very central, very shared space. They weren't locked away in a bedroom, they weren't in some separate study or anything like that. They were there for everybody to see. And I was definitely very aware of that, that people know me as an English literature student, people know me as someone who likes to read and it's almost like proving that having this permanently growing collection of books that you're possibly not going to read more than once and very likely you haven't read a lot of the books you own and I see that on booktube a lot people kind of collecting books and hauling books and being sent books and then never talking about them again or never reviewing them and I'm not saying they haven't read them but I'm saying that if you don't read the books after a certain amount of time you, do, you probably don't want to, you're probably not going to, so why hold on to that book that doesn't have any meaning? I could definitely talk about this for a long time, but let's just say that I challenged myself and I questioned myself about why I was holding on to books that I maybe didn't even enjoy when I read them. And it just came back to that point of showing myself the way I wanted to be seen, if that made sense. The only other books I own are books that I left at my parents' house. Um, they've been there since I moved out of my parents' house, so they're very much sentimental childhood books. I have my Complete Ruled Al collection, I have probably the Hunger Games trilogy, and Dick King Smith books and Jacqueline Wilson books and then a few very very old copies of books that my parents had as children and then some non-fiction books generally about horses. Those books I still own, that wasn't really a conscious choice, it's just because 
I didn't get round to sorting through those. There aren't that many of them and they're, they're perfectly safe where they are. But even thinking about those books has got me thinking that when I would buy books when I was 16, 17, 18, or even when I was given books as part of an English class to study, I'd always imagine those books just being with me for life. I would envision myself in 20 years time owning a room that just was lined with bookcases. Such a pleasing daydream and it still is and definitely I thought when I was younger that if I wanted to own lots of books as an adult that I would have to start early and look after my books and hold on to them. And now I look back at the books I was buying and the books I was reading when I was 16 and they don't connect to me right now, age 22 and 11 months, and certainly probably won't connect with my 40 year old self. And right now I'm kind of safe in the knowledge that these books that are very meaningful to me, age 22 years and 11 months, will probably mean very little to my 40 year old self. And so I think it's good not to kind of look at your life in chapters or, you know, close off certain parts of your personality because you've aged. But I think every couple of years having a look at not just your books, but everything you own, everything you've accumulated and asking yourself, does it connect to who you are right now in this moment? Or are you being nostalgic and are you remembering how your younger self connected with those things and that's why you're kind of afraid to let go of them. Back to more practical conversation for a second. I got rid of my books by donating them to charity. I donated a lot of books to two different charity shops in the village that I used to live. I sold quite a number of them, particularly books that I studied in university that I remember firsthand being quite expensive to purchase. So I sold those on second hand. And then there were 40 books, two different groups of 20 that I sold in bulk on eBay. I just sold them as 20 books, um, total mixture of genre and things like that. How I figured out which books I wanted to get rid of, I pulled them out of the shelves and I made a pile of books I definitely want to keep and books I don't really want to keep. Once I had those two piles I went back to the books I definitely want to keep pile and I just was really strict with myself and narrowed it down even further and you know really kind of had this internal argument of do you really want to keep this? Do you need this? Are you going to read this? You know, all those kind of things. And I did that a few times until the books I was getting rid of pile was vastly larger than the books I was keeping pile and it was weird it was actually quite easy you know taping them up in a box and sending them away or putting them in a bag and taking them to a charity shop the most difficult part and this is very honest and I don't know how this makes me sound but I was actually sad about the amount of money I'd lost I think particularly because a lot of my university books I didn't choose to read those books and I didn't have any sort of connection to them they weren't gifts they were just books that I was forced to spend money on and I did buy lots of them second hand don't get me wrong but just giving those away and feeling all that kind of student debt pile up um, with with the cost of these books on top it was just a little bit difficult. Finally just let me talk really quickly about the books that made the final cut in my life you might find it interesting I don't know so I brought all four of my Elena Ferrante books I haven't read the last three in the series so that's why I brought those also they're such beautiful colours. Um, Emma Klein's The Girls which I raved about and I love. This is a notebook. I have three editions of Jane Eyre. See if I was really good at this minimalism cutting down thing I would not own three editions of my favourite book but I'm just really attached to each one of those so forgive me forgive me. Um, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and Hollow City. Then I have two Sylvia Plath poetry books and The Bell Jar. I have two Donna Tart books. One I have read, the other I have not finished. I love Donna Tart very much. Bram Stoker's Dracula at the very end. And then two of the Little Black Penguins, uh, Emily Bronte and Edgar Allan Poe. On this shelf I have The Great Gatsby, Emily Dickinson's Poetry, The Colour Purple, Joseph Conrad's The Secret Agent. This is one of the Pocket Penguin editions. Um, these are beautiful, beautiful books. They come in different colours and the colour represents the language that it was written in. So I have three more of these at my mum and dad's house and this one is just gorgeous. On the Road by Jack Kerouac. I have Nothing Tastes As Good by Claire Hennessy. Highly recommend, I really enjoyed that. The 10th edition of Girl Missing by Sophie McKenzie was sent to me just before I moved so I had to throw it in the box. 
I have Flan O'Brien, a couple of Harry Potters. There's more of my husband's Harry Potter books down in the next shelf. There's just a few. Then I have a very sentimental edition of Pride and Prejudice. I have Patrick Ness's The Ask and the Answer. I'm not sure how that got here. I genuinely don't know because the first book and the last book didn't make it and there's absolutely no reason for this to be here. I have Little Women which is borrowed, I need to give that back. Big Fish by Daniel Wallace, Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, Looking for Alaska, signed copy by John Green, Joni Mitchell's complete studio albums. This is probably the only physical music that I have a real connection to um, and I absolutely adore this. So that lives here in the end because because I ran out of books to, to fill the space. How bizarre. Shelf number three is my husband's. Those are his books and shelf number four has the beautiful 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 children's book Lost and Found by Oliver Jeffers. There's a film version and I just I just love it. It's beautiful. These were a wedding gift and then I have two candles by the Bearded Candle Makers. They're a small company in Belfast. These are natural soy wax candles and I've had one of them before. My friend Irma keeps buying them to me. She's very kind, thank you very much. This one is Professor Sprout's Greenhouse and this one is Snape's Doe, as in a deer. Um, they smell beautiful and they burn really well and I haven't opened them yet. They don't usually look so beautifully presented but they come in these little tins. They're really lovely so if you're in Belfast check them out. So this now becomes an ongoing challenge because hopefully I'm going to own new books in my life. Hopefully I'm going to purchase some books. I, I do get sent the occasional review copy which is lovely and I, I don't want this to get out of control. I'm happy to fill this bookcase but I don't want to have what we had in our old house where you would open a kitchen cupboard and a book would fall in your head. Genuinely that happened a lot. Um, I want to keep being very self-aware of why I'm hoarding things and I also want to be very honest about my ability in that if I don't think I'm going to read a particular book, if I don't have time, if I'm not up to the challenge of reading a book, not to hold on to it and then the book itself becomes a sort of reminder that I'm a failure who hasn't read this, you know, Russian classic or whatever it may be. I don't want to be hard on myself, I just want to let it go, just pass that book back out into the world where somebody might actually enjoy it. Let me know all your thoughts on holding on to books and um, thank you for watching as always. I will see you soon. Bye!